All right, so we're recording here now, and on behalf of Basketball Ireland, I just want to introduce everybody to the Performance Co Conference in associating with Pinergy. All right, so it's an official um, partner with Basketball Ireland. Uh, tonight, we're going to be chatting about, um, with a focus on strength and conditioning and the culture of strength and conditioning in Irish basketball, uh, as opposed to around the world, but also as opposed to other sports. And we've got some uh, four panelists here. We have Aina Rutherford, we've Kevin Mulcahy, we've Kevin Foley, and we've Peter Madison. All right, so the four boys are going to introduce themselves here real quick, and then we're going to get into the teeth of it. I'm going to ask questions. I'm just, it's kind of an open discussion, lad, so you can just explore whatever avenues you go in, and I'll try and keep it on topic as much as I can, but uh, um, open discussion just to, to explore Irish basketball and the culture that we have set. So uh, if we want to start, we'll start with Kevin Mulcahy. Kevin, if you want to introduce yourself to everybody there. Yeah, uh, great to be here, lads, and thanks for uh, asking me to come on. Um, Kevin Mulcahy from Cork, strength and conditioning and performance coach. I work with athletes and teams around Cork, and I work with athletes basically around the world through an online business. Uh, I'm coaching 27 years, come from a kind of traditional GA and soccer background in Cork. Played a lot, played quite late, but I'm coaching a long time as well. Um, so probably the last six, seven years, I've really got involved in through my performance coaching and SNC roles in other sports and including basketball and in the last 18 months, two years specifically with Ballancolic basketball, which has been a really excellent experience for me, uh, working with the club in a, in a gen very general sense and, and the coaches and players specifically as well. Excellent. Thanks, Kev. Welcome to, welcome to the talk. Uh, Aina, no do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thanks uh, a million, Niall, for, for hosting and Thanks to all the rest of the lads as well. I'm looking forward to, to the discussion. Um, so yeah, my name's Aina Rutherford. I'm a former, I guess, basketball player. I don't know if I'd be allowed to still use that term. Two of my former teammates are on the screen here, Pete Madsen and Kev Foley. Maybe they could better attest to whether I'm allowed to use that term or not. But um, yeah, I, I suppose I started my SNC journey as a basketball player first. I struggled a lot with injuries struggled staying on the court and that's where I, I guess I first got involved. I, I did a sports management and coaching a degree and started a position with the National Athlete Development Academy, NADA, um, under Martin Kennedy and uh, just amazing, amazing position, amazing opportunity to learn from just some terrific coaches there. So I had the privilege of working with the, the likes of the Dublin GAA team in Jim Gavin's first year. Um, from there, I worked a little bit with Colester Basketball Club and even to this day, uh, intermittently have worked and had the pleasure of working with them. Uh, I, I left Ireland then and went to America and was working with the University of Houston. So their sports performance department with all their different sports teams, but predominantly with American football. And uh, from there, I transitioned to the, the Houston Rockets and was working uh, on their performance team uh, there as well. And then I took a complete, I guess, I won't say you turn, I don't know what the appropriate, uh, I guess, uh, term would be, but I started a youth justice worker position. So I'm now working with young men who are involved with the criminal justice system. So mentor them. And so athlete development and sports performance coaching is kind of more on the, the almost the, the side for me now. So I work with a few underage teams and a few individual athletes and, yeah. and that's it. Well, I, so. I think they call that finding your calling. Is that what they, is that oh, the way to write Hey, I like that. We'll go with that term. Yeah. We'll go with that they term. found your calling in life and you, you still give back to the youth of Irish basketball, but- I, I hope your... so, I hope so. <laughs> Excellent. Well, welcome Aina, thanks, for, thanks for, for being here. Thanks, Nan. Kev, do you want to let us know who you are, where you came from? Yeah, well, my back is still sore from Carrie and Pete and Aina the last few years on the basketball <laughs> I know, Aina, Aina can call himself a basketball player, we'll give him that. I suppose my uh, S&C career started when I uh, was over in the States. So I worked under a lot of S&C coaches from kind of the age of 18. I got home. Peter convinced me to do like a certificate in exercise and fitness. So I went straight into that. I got home. UCD, I got a scholarship to play ball with UCD, more strength coaches, just developing that passion for it. Uh, then what I would have done was went up to Jordanstown. I was still kind of working in the fitness industry, more PT. -ing. 
and then up to Jordanstown, play with them. Peter's going to slag me about playing for every team in the country. So let me just slag myself first. And then I did a master's in exercise physiology with Trinity College. But like, I've kind of traveled a lot trying to learn from different people. Like working with the Irish Strength Institute, I got an opportunity to intern with North Carolina. Uh, I worked with them for their preseason. The last time they won the national championship. I'm still waiting for my championship ring, but uh, I don't think that's oh, going to arrive. <laughs> and then myself and Peter, like he's as passionate as I am. We traveled to Greece to work under uh, the head of uh, head of athletic development for CSK Moscow. He's based in he's based in Athens, Greece, where he, I mean, one of his clients is the Greek freak Yanis. He trains him during the summer, so it's just a great opportunity. And we're trying to just build that knowledge, like so we can bring it back to basketball Ireland and try to improve the strategies that we're trying to put in place to better the game. Because yeah, like Peter said before, uh, it's unfortunate that it's, it's not more prevalent within the game and it would just do massive, massive improvements for basketball in Ireland. Absolutely, absolutely. I was just, before you made that joke in there, I was at, I was saying you never played for Portage Panthers and, and maybe you're, we need to get you, I'll give you a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> to get I'm, you open, I'm open to anything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait okay. till the season finishes. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to be poaching on this call or anything. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, no. So welcome. Thanks for thanks for thanks coming. Um, all right, and then we'll we we'll get on to uh, Peter. Can you give us a, a brief outline of where you've come? Yeah, so I'm currently the head of athletic development. Well, co-head of athletic development within Basketball Ireland with Kev. Um, I have a master's in exercise and nutrition, and also qualified through the National Strength and Conditioning Association. And real briefly, um, my SNC journey started when I was playing in the States and I was kind of pulled into the office by coach and he suggested that, you know, um, your, 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 your skill set is pretty strong, but you're not strong. So you need to get strong in order to compete. So and that's pretty much what I did. And I was amazed at how, um, how, how you know, involved in SNC the athletes were over there at such a young age and again I was in my first year of college there but there were still some high school athletes training there and again it just took off from there really and I just loved it so and I was fortunate enough to work in the Irish Strength Institute as well and worked with a bunch of athletes that actually came through there everything from MMA athletes some of them have gone on to the UFC um Clontarf rugby and and then also a little bit in the GAA realm as well. So kind of a mixed bag, as I said. But again, basketball is my passion and just wanted to kind of get involved some way, somehow, and see if we can uh, get this this country to another level in basketball terms. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, I appreciate you being on, on the call. I appreciate you all being on the call, lads. And, and we'll get into the teeth of that in a minute now and, and see if we can discuss the culture of Irish basketball and, and kind of get your thoughts on it and where it is and where it's headed. But... Um, yeah, no, I suppose, first and foremost, I'd like to say just listening to you kind of give give us kind of a synopsis of where you came from and your, your history. That I, I think there's probably an individual talk with each one of you to break down, kind of get into the details of your journeys, because it sounds to me that you've been kind of all over and, and you've a lot of little tales and little insights that I suppose Irish people, you know, who travel abroad, they, they get a lot of culture, they get a lot of understanding of different yeah. ways of doing things and, and to be able to bring that home. And kind of share it with the Irish public and in our particular with us, the Irish basketball public, but but in general, you know, that's that's huge for, for us as a nation, I think, you know. And so it's it's great to hear your introductions. Uh, I, I said I'd love to hear more and, and maybe we'll get into that get into that at, at a later date. Um on the topic of this this conversation, and probably the one of the most important thing and the place to start is I'm gonna start with Peter and Kevin because I suppose given that you're so heavily involved with Irish basketball as the heads of strength and conditioning in the country. I, I suppose I'd like to get into, um, I suppose, the culture of Irish basketball and, and kind of where we are right now um, as a culture, where we are, like what, what exactly we're, are we at and where are we going? And I suppose I'll start with you, Peter. What, what would your thoughts be on, on our culture? Our culture within the SNC. So, I mean, I guess there's three ways you can, or three areas that we wanted to look at. So, I mean, on an international level, which is ideally what we were brought in for, our underage, and then at our academy level, which is our under 15 and under 14s. Um, it, the question is, is just how prevalent is SNC within basketball in Ireland? 
And I guess you could say at an international level, it's very prevalent because of the fact, obviously, we have some amazing strength coaches. So Kevin and I have the privilege of working with a number of the strength coaches that are in place for each team. Um, and we are very, very fortunate to have some really, really, really knowledgeable guys. Um, in terms of the academies, again, we're only really scratching the surface with these guys. Um, and that's really where Kevin and I wanted to do a lot of our work was with the academies and actually even younger than that, so locally. So looking at the, the, the local level, so all the clubs, again, the question is, is how prevalent is, you know, strength and conditioning or physical preparation at a local level? And I can only speak for what I've seen and some of the guys might be able to chime in, but I mean, it's not as prevalent as you would think. Um, in fact, in a lot of cases, it's not prevalent at all. Um, what we found was we, we, Kevin and I, we developed a thing called stages of development where we have three stages for our international squad. So it'll be the foundation level, development level, and then performance. But what we found was when we were getting to the international athletes that the international athletes should have been at what we call the performance stage, but they were really only at this foundation stage. And so like, you know, very limited body control, you know, didn't really have the basics. A lot of them, all they want to do, they ask you, Let, teach me how to jump high when they can't even land as such. Yeah. So some of the real basic stuff that they, they, you know, you would think that they were, they should have been ahead of the game. They, they actually weren't. So with that being said, I'd love to get in at some of the local, local teams and develop some sort of long-term athletic development models within local clubs. And I've kind of, you know, I've started working with some of the, and Kevin and I, we've actually started working with some of the development officers, and that's kind of a, now a, a new goal for us. Obviously, it was all halted with, um, with, with COVID, but we wanted to basically devise a player welfare kind of model booklet type thing where we can then deliver workshops to the to, to the basketball coaches so it's it's user friendly and then it will just feed into the to the youth athletes as such and and just go from there but again it's it's really in its infancy um and it was just more of an idea and so but yeah it's it's a strange one because i think strength and conditioning within the basketball realm is still being perceived in a real kind of outdated view so what do i mean by that like so i mean i'm still asked questions like well like you know strength you know strength work is going to um you know it's going to stunt your growth and you hear that from a basketball perspective you know they're going to be running a mile um you know parents you know how do we get the parents on side for these young kids for so we can start to develop the kids you know so i mean i think some of them are still kind of have claims that like you know weight training or resistance training is is dangerous you know and yeah. you know we we're all we're trying to do is to help these kids develop and meet the physical demands of the of the sport itself you know and trying to get that message across and, and i'm sure you guys have probably heard this before as well especially some of the basketball guys is you know lifting weights or resistance training it's going to mess up your shot you know or it's going to make you slow so again it's just i think it's just about the message what we're trying to get across and like having something like this this talk again it's just creating awareness around the successes of physical preparation i mean why are we not anywhere near the likes of the irfu you know, we, who are like pretty much probably the gold standard when it comes to, you know, developing athletes as such. And the GAA probably, you know, not far behind them. But from a basketball perspective, you know, I would really, really love for us to take it to another level. I think basketball is in, is at an amazing point because of the gene pool in basketball has completely changed now from when I was playing underage. And now we need to take advantage. I mean, we have, you, you talk about, you know, genetics. We now have started, we now are starting to have the genetics. It's right there in front of us. Um, and we have, an, I, I'm, we have an abundance of really, really good strength and conditioning coaches in this country. Really good quality. Um, it's just, you know, again, trying to get that message across to the local clubs. So then by the time these, these eight-year-olds get to, you know, 15, 16, puberty kicks in, you know, they have all the basics and then we're developing these athletes. So yeah. that's kind of where I am with the whole thing in terms of the culture. Again, it's kind of, as I said, I'm, I know I sit in the fence, but I mean, we, as far as it 
calling it a mixed bag. It's it is there, but it's not there at a local level. Is yeah. kind of what I'm getting at. And you, I suppose, for me, just what what's resonating with me is is where do we come from and where are we going? You know, perhaps we came from I suppose what 20 years ago, maybe 15, 20 years ago, volunteer coaches telling yeah. somebody to get in and get on a bench press and 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 do specific sets that was not really strength building, more like just hypertrophy and kind of building up the size and restricting kids. So uh, it's, yeah. it's like strength condition has advanced so much. And I, I just, I suppose where we came from is a place that of, of lack of knowledge, but where we are now and definitely where we're going, I think people really need to realize that the knowledge and the education that's coming to Ireland when it comes to strength and conditioning, yeah. and, and that rivals the rest of Europe. And, and, and we, I suppose it's just about buying into it really. Is that kind yeah. of the idea? Yeah, well, I mean, even even working with high level like basketball athletes when I was at, when I was at UNC, even their freshmen coming in were poor movers. Like, so I suppose what I'm getting at is that Peter talked about S and C, and he then he mentioned physical preparation. I think that's that's part of the issue that S and C kind of, and I know Kevin's going to touch on that a bit later. But what we want from our S and C program. Number one is just better movement, uh, resistance to injury. And I think sometimes when people hear S and C, yeah. they get afraid of what you just said, Niall, about like, oh, straight on the bench press, creating bulk that doesn't really work. So structural hypertrophy or just muscle bound athletes versus actual functional athletes. But like, so our programs that we have tried to standardize for the likes of our academies is we're trying to master mechanics. We're not doing anything else. Like we don't even, we don't even have like a dumbbell barbell anywhere near these kids. Like that's not the plan. We tested, I think one day, maybe 500 athletes on a vertex vertic in vertical jump. And they're, they can't express their, their power because their mechanics for jumping was just so bad. Like knees collapsing. Like as they jumped, their arms were going the opposite way as if they're a ski jumper. Or putting them onto the court and watching watching how they run, just like their acceleration. We're trying to fix all of that before we ever send them to any type of a gym structure. So we're trying to build build like Peter said the foundation first, and only build that type of strength as we've mastered everything else. So I mean, the term physical preparation is more is a better term for these athletes, and I, I hope that that shifts as well because i know coaches can be afraid of that but that's kind of that's kind of where we're at now it's more mastering the mechanics from a young age which they don't have and then not compounding that by adding strength onto poor mechanics later on mm. yeah. and, and i think i definitely think discussions like this kind of i wouldn't say they're the starting point because i suppose yeah. you've sent over the the programs that you're doing with with the academies and throughout irish basketball and, and the starting point is the hours of preparation that go before this conversation you know, conversations like these to highlight the work that's being done to bring strength and conditioning into modern times and, and I suppose catapulted to the top of, of European basketball and so on. So I suppose like th that, when when Peter sent on that document, I was like reading it, it was like, it was so comprehensive. It was like the Irish public don't know what goes into a strength and conditioning program. They don't know what goes in behind the scenes. And that's, that probably is a great segue into to that, Kev, that I suppose the secondary topic that we wanted to discuss was implementing those strategies across Irish basketball or just implementing a program in general. What, what are the phases? Can you give us kind of maybe an insight into those phases to, to, to give the Irish public a kind of a knowledge of that, more of a knowledge? Yeah, well, basically, like, we, I suppose that Peter talked about kind of the logistics of training 500 athletes. So when we first came in, um, what we were finding was an SNC coach would come in train that team, go away. And then the next SNC coach that came in wouldn't have a clue. So what we've tried to do is I'm not, I'm not really into standardizing stuff because I know this sounds cliche, but every person is an individual and we want to get individuals and address their individual weaknesses, strengths and improve on that. But from this standpoint, what we've done is we've tried to, with all the athletes we've worked with over the last three, four years within basketball, We've seen the same kind of issues pop up, multiple ankle sprains, ankle immobility, stuff like that. So we've tried to structure the programs to deal with those major issues that we're seeing all the time. But yeah, from a, from a young age, what we want to do is make sure that every kid is in the system. 
So if he starts off with the under 14 academy, the SNC coach that hits him at under 16 can see kind of a backlog of what he's done. So we've added in kind of progressions to every exercise and importantly as well, regressions, just in case that he comes to under 16, he's had an injury, he's had an issue that he needs to be brought back. But most importantly, that these kids, there is a historical database for them. And that's kind of the most important thing so that the next SNC coach that comes in can see, okay, what, was, what has this kid been doing? Okay, sprint mechanics, jump mechanics, he's done well at phase one. Now he's moved into phase two. Let's continue with that and push him on so that by the time we're in under 18, under 20, senior national team, we have high functioning athletes that are really, really resilient. And that's the, I think that's the main word is resilient. Resilient, yeah. Resilient. I, I absolutely agree. And that's, I suppose, when you, when you move through it, when you get them as their fundamental bases and, you know, they're physically literate and they're, you know, they're starting to build up that strength base. When do you add, like, resistance? Like, like would you wait until their late teens? Would you wait, like, early 20s? Or would you start earlier? Or, like, I know, Peter, you shared a, uh, what the, I suppose, for the clinic, for the online uh, yeah. the, you know what was that again the for basketball Ireland you shared it up online the online skills challenges <clears throat> you shared a body weight program yeah. like when would we add resistance what's the what's the idea there well it's kind of like what Kev is saying I mean every athlete is an individual so yeah. I mean there's ways of looking at the maturation status of the athlete I mean the young person and then you know um, then implementing resistance training, whether it is, is external force, depending on where they are in terms of the maturation phase. But again, like Kev said, the most important thing for us is that these kids, these athletes are moving well, no matter what age. If this, if this kid is even, you know, well past puberty and they still aren't very good movers, they're dysfunctional in, in what they do, then we're not going to load them for the, for, you know, initially we'll want to check it out and see how they, how they're getting on with it. So yeah. yeah, that that would be kind of where we're going with it. Like, you know what I mean? We wouldn't, we're not in a hurry to get them under a bar, put it that way, you know? De Declan, or sorry, Niall, sorry. Uh, there is, I, I suppose Kevin might might um, know it as well. We I kind of, me and Peter follow like Dan Baker. He's a big time strength coach from Australia. And he's actually studied it for so long, long-term athletic development, where there are tests you can do with each athlete. Like I think it's seven tests. I can't remember it off the top of my head, where it shows if they pass at a certain level, it gives you kind of an indicator whether they're ready to move on to more resistance training with a bar or dumbbell or kind of like <clears throat> weight training exercises. But like Peter yeah. said, we, we kind of, we look at each individual as well, with it, but the test kind of gives you some validation to maybe move them on to a more strength-based program. Absolutely. And is there, is there an element of this, I suppose, I don't know, uh, uh, Kevin or Aina, I don't know if you have an idea in this regard as well, or would you like to chime in on this. Is there an element here where, I suppose, the cross, the, I mean, kids playing so many different sports means that there's only a specific amount of stuff we have to do with them to make sure their they're physically, physical literacy is, is, is right, that their movement capacity are right, that the strength will almost, will add that at a, at a time where they start to specialize. Is there, is that kind of the idea here? So just to elaborate more so on. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, I think there's kind of a baseline. I mean, you know, unfortunately, the, the kids, uh, anybody really who gets injured, an awful lot of them, not all of them, tend to be very talented and wanted by everybody, right? Um, so if you get an hour with them a week, the way I would look at it, is if I could get them to squat, push, pull, hinge, lunge, step, brace uh, for one set in the movement warm up at the start, start of training, and even if I ended up coaching that to their local regular coach, like, and that happened every week for what, well, let's say 30 weeks of the year, like that little bit of consistency, like that's really what I drive home when I, particularly when I work with coaches. Is like we only need to get six or seven, maybe eight exercises. I'll work with you for a session or two or three or four and do it till they're bored of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, because and they'll come to you going, Can we do more? Can we do, you know? Um, and I think you can only look after your session, right? You can certainly give advice and, and help them. 
communicate with yourself. When you have them, you know, you just got to do, um, you just got to do your best. Yeah. yeah. I a, a three minute circuit at the start and a three minute circuit before they go home. And there you go, two sets of resistance training. You know, I, they might be using weights, but, um, so that would be important. I'd say you're confident, <clears throat> coach to coaches, you're confident that they've done two sets a week or whatever, six months. Kevin, I'd say you're having, Kevin, sorry, I'd say you're having an issue with your microphone there. Is it kind of, is it stopping and starting on you? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was kind of going on and off there. I don't know if there was an issue Sorry, with your keypad is, or yeah, something. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, better so there now, anyway. That'll be basically it, you know. If, if you had the confidence that there was going to be 100 sets in a few months done yeah. of a set of exercises, and you can re progress and regress. I, I think the two lads would be, as, as a bigger picture organizers, like that would be fantastic, you know. And, um, and that's all you can do. You know, certainly you can connect with other coaches. You can connect with the player and you can connect with the, the parents. But we all know that that's a minefield. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. That kind of that leads kind of into that. And I suppose that demystifying athletic development and, and SNC in Ireland is that, is, is that a big thing in your mind, Kevin? And, and, and what, what, what do you think we need to do to combat? Well, it was interesting there. Uh, I think it was you were saying, Niall, about how far we've come and, uh, and the quality of SNC coaches and sports. Like I would say Ireland is probably the most saturated SNC in the world per, per capita, like because of the Satanta degree and various other things, a lot of uh, masters and uh, further education courses in Ireland for considering the size of this. So we're, we're well laden with talent from that point of view. The funny thing is, have we got too far away from that volunteer coach? Mm. And the funny, what I am a part of the talk that I was going to chat about here anyway, leads nicely into this really, is, and I'm not talking about all of them. Some of them are highly curious, but coaches could, they're almost fearful of us sometimes, you know? And there's a lot of jargon. I'm guilty of using it myself sometimes. I really try hard to, and it's not simplifying. It's just, meeting them where they're at yeah i think if we went into um it the players as well by the way mm -hmm. the big thing is connecting the snc to the game right like i i there is loads of basketball examples but i'll give a hurling camogie one because i'm just most comfortable with it and i've done it an awful lot right if you think about the deadlift right when i'm let's say a camogie team in particular right um 16 to adult girls, you know, some of them would never have done a weight. And, and there's still some cultural and still some uh, issues there with selling it to them, right? Yeah. But if I, we do the deadlifts, I mightn't say anything about it. We go out on the pitch, maybe sometimes in the same session, right? If the facility's allowed. And we do a lot of battling drills where the girls start standing over athletic position over the ball. And they're trying to protect the ball and not let someone step into their position, right? I'm sure there's many, many similar in, in all sports. I tell them that's the deadlift. I tell them the coach, like they're holding, that's their strength, their force into the ground. They're in that athletic position. Now, it's not truly the same thing as deadlift. But we're getting the message across, like, look how, and look how important this is. Yeah. Or, do you feel better now that you're protecting the ball and you know, you know, um, and yeah, I, I'll give you another great example sorry, in basketball. Yeah, in basketball, um, James Harden, I don't know if you know who James Harden is, but it, exactly like you were saying, how do we contextualize what we're doing with them in the, say, in the weight room or in the hall or wherever we're doing it and relate it directly back to the game? So James Harden has this, probably one of the toughest moves in basketball is a step back. And a step back, all it looks like is a forward lunge and then being able to, you know, decelerate and then accelerate back. Like, that is difficult to do. But exactly like you said, that's a great point. Yeah. And, and like, as much as makes sense or possible, and I was just, I took a few notes there when you were talking as well. Like, you know, how do we connect this for people, especially local clubs, 
coaches, let's say, because if you the broad net, yeah, like and thinking from you've got to think. I think, and I'm involved with Cork development squads. You know, I I think about the winners and counties and all Ireland's as well, but participation and retention underpins everything, right? So if we want to broaden the net, we want to give the opportunity to every young athlete playing basketball that he mightn't be a squad player at 14, but he might be at 16, right? So engaging with the parents, maybe just initial opening day kind of stuff, right? This is why we're doing it. Sometimes I've even had the parents do the exercises with the kids, right? You know, there's a reason for this. Like in basketball now, and I, and I, I will, pardon my ignorance or low level of experience in working with basketballers, but in a very broad sense, what I would think, like, I don't worry too much about conditioning. And that's because of the culture as well as the playing of the sport, right? I worry about ankles, knees, jumping, being strong, yeah, right? Yeah. Just getting them strong. And, and nine times out of 10, that's going to make an awful difference to them, right? Um, but the culture of basketball is quite similar to soccer, right? And again, I'm still talking about connections and, you know, it's a street sport. The lads I know that play basketball play a hell of a lot of it right they are conditioned you know you might do some extra off season stuff you might do so tempo runs for recovery you know that kind of stuff but they're very conditioned but i think we really have to know the audience right and we have to find a connection with each coach whoever we're working with and player to demystify it is is the title where we have to be self-aware though and i clatter myself on 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 the knuckles as much as anyone in that sense because you know, and get carried away with the jargon and, yeah. you know, keep asking questions and get them to ask you questions. And, and you know what? Sometimes fellas buy in like that, right? And the coach gets interested. And sometimes it's three months. But something you said on the opening day about, look, this transfers to the pitch like this, mm. or, or, or maybe some coaches, I'll sell, I'll sell it to them. Look, if you have 25 players available in September, you have a better chance of winning the honor. You know, it's, it's like, and that's if that's the point. way they look at it, great. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's a fantastic point when you think about it. I suppose, and it's just coming to me. Really, I suppose there's a bell going off in my head. How much of the issue with with the, the understanding of strength and condition and how much it's advanced comes from a, a component of of people being highly educated and, and getting degrees and masters and even moving on to PhDs in strength and conditioning versus the volunteer coaching structure. You know, it's it can be with a volunteer coaching structure who have a knowledge of the game. And, and I suppose to me, that, that is research based. Like, I mean, if you've coached in the game for 20 years, you've done yeah. a lot of research, you know. So yeah. but maybe the disconnect is, is I suppose, the, the intricacies of, of uh, college education and getting all this knowledge and trying to provide that knowledge versus somebody who doesn't have that knowledge and yeah. finds it hard to have the discussion about that knowledge. With that, Ian, I'd like to bring you in on that. What do you think on that one? Yeah, I suppose even just to, to follow up on some of the points Kevin made there, even at the beginning, which I would firmly support, is that this physical preparation, athlete development, strength and conditioning, it's for everyone. It's not just for elite athletes. Mm. I think very often times when I talk with parents, they kind of look at me as an individual who wants to turn their kid into a boy racer. You know, like put a nice spoiler on, on the back of the car, nice alloys, and they're just going to go off speed and then crash. And that it's all about show and image. And I want to say that is not the image of our role. We're the mechanic. We're the mechanic who wants to keep the car serviced, keep it on the road, keep it working efficiently. And no matter what car you have or what speed it goes to take this analogy maybe a little too far, everyone needs a mechanic. Um, so I, I would definitely see our role as fitting that. So I want to say to parents and coaches, this is for everyone, including the parents and coaches. Mm. Um, I think Kevin also made another, I think, fantastic point, which I've absolutely seen, especially as you compare this to the likes of rugby or when I was in the States, American football, which have such ingrained strength and conditioning cultures in their sports for such a long time that basketball and, and football soccer players, they just want to play their sport. They want to go out and compete. They, they don't want to go near a weight room half the time. So I, I would also suggest then to, and, and encourage all our strength and conditioning coaches, 
to do our best, although this isn't for everyone, and I have got a little bit of kickback on this, so you can take it with a bit, bit of salt, is that to try and make that time fun, yeah. to try and make it enjoyable, to mm. try bring in some sort of game-based fun aspects to the weight room and begin to slowly kind of change the culture of what it is. And, and hopefully, I mean, you mentioned this earlier, Niall, but, but Peter and, and, and Kev had sent on their content. And I played with those two lads uh, last year. And I had no idea, even from the discussions, the extent of information and hard work they have put in. I mean, if I was a parent and my child was on the national uh, team programs or the academies, I would be feeling very assured that they're in very good hands. I mean, the level of detail is absolutely superb and uh, the quality of, of content and research is just absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, I would encourage it and, and, and follow up on Kevin's message. This is for everyone. We're not there to hurt your child. We're not, we are there to keep them on the road. Yeah. And it, 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 yeah. you know what, just to jump on that bandwagon in a bit, I suppose being a development officer and hearing Peter talk about going through the development office to try and get to the clubs, I said, I can, I can second that. And, and I said, we support it fully. And that's hopefully we, we as, as a national governing body and everybody that's internal in basketball Ireland can do their piece in, in trying to get it into the community and get it into the local clubs. I said, it'll be fantastic for the, for the uh, international programs, but uh, you're dead right. Um, like getting it to the local clubs, I think we have a major responsibility and, and being a development officer, I feel like I have a major responsibility to assist in, in delivering and getting it out there uh, and even connecting like yourselves to those clubs for any discussions they need or, or that too, you know? So yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, I well, have uh, one, one last point there, Noel, if yep, you don't mind. Of course, Ken, and yep. it's just it's jumping back to what the lads have said, really, and uh, what you said, I think, about knowledge. Uh, and I suppose an anecdote, but also I think if I was taught, if I was doing it myself, actually, and this is about my, myself, you know, when I get involved in basketball recently, like you automatically become humble because I'm coming from a different sport, right? So I and someone I, I'm stealing this term from someone else and I can't remember it, but like those coaches that are 10, 20 years, 30 years, like they have a PhD in basketball coaching. And to think about it that way, but what I've found is that it's pulled away some of my maybe assumptions when I've gone back to Gaelic football. Mm. Now I'm assuming everybody I work with in Gaelic football has a PhD in um, Gaelic football coaching as well. And I'm taking away, you know, my arrogance, my knowledge my confidence my old knowledge whatever you might whatever way you might look at it and i think if we and like you know if everybody's kind of taking that approach like you start learning once you open up like yeah. uh, and, and people feed off that we all like to be asked what do you think, what do you think about this you know what i mean uh then our, our value our, our sorry our, our knowledge is valued and i think coaches react very well to that and that's from our athletic development snc role yeah. I think that's a really important part. Yeah. Creates that climate, doesn't it? That climate yeah. around everybody of, of learning and growth mindset for, for everybody, myself included, ourselves included. So, yeah, um, yeah absolutely. Aina, I have one, I suppose, Peter touched on there, James Harden. And I suppose James <laughs> Harden's deceleration <laughs> and acceleration backwards. Yeah, that was, not, that was all me, Niall. That like, was, were you, <laughs> okay, was that, I'm just, because I'm, I'm pretty sure he did, like, who was his strength and condition coach? I'm not, <laughs> like, um, but but they, here's the thing, I suppose that, that segues into this last piece of the conversation is, is, is that, did you work with that, Lisa? And what is the difference between how they do, like, is that movement, his step back movement, a product of, of strength and conditioning and m m repeat repetitions of a specific skill set rather than just getting on the court and getting up shots and, and doing that, uh, you know, every day? What, what is the process of that? And what's the difference between, I suppose, the, like an American culture versus Irish culture when it comes to strength and conditioning on the perception? So there's a lot in that. Yeah, yeah, I'll try, I'll try and unpack a, a bit of that. You're definitely, you're really trying to give strength conditioning the, the credit for James Harden <laughs> step back there. I, 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 <laughs> well, I, I suppose on, on one hand, no, no, that that step back isn't a product of what maybe you'd call a strength and conditioning session, but it's movement, it's balance, it's coordination, and, and that is all part of our role. It's included 
in our role. And that's where, as you mentioned earlier, there's, there, there is a joining at the hip between the sports coach and then the SNC athlete development coach. So they're, they're not, it's not one or the other, they're, they're interlinked, I think, in that sense. So he would work on a step back in a weight room environment, like I think with a medicine ball, because he, he liked to use that because the heavier weight would kind of throw his balance off. So then when he had just a normal standard basketball, he felt like he was more in control. Is that why he has that step back? No, that's not the only reason. It's it's a it's an athlete's journey. It's it's the it's the whole whole picture. Um, I suppose to your point about maybe the differences between, I guess I can only speak to my experience in the University of Houston and then the Houston Rockets, and I suppose one of the biggest differences right off the bat is just the the, the amount of resources. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I mean, you talk about University of Houston, which you know, it's probably in the grand scheme of the United States third level sports institutes, not a massive name, maybe a, a mid middle tier kind of university. I hope they don't listen to this. You know, no. <laughs> last, they last, used to be good, ain't it? They used to last, be really good. Yeah, obviously, historically, a phenomenal program, you know, with the, the likes of Hakeem Elijah coming through, but in, in terms of their budget, even kind of more middle tier and their budget would probably, I don't know that exact number, and I, I may be going a little bit off the guff here, but would probably be bigger than our Olympic Council budget yeah. for all of our, our national uh, sports teams and programs. That's one university. Mm -hmm. I mean, so in that sense, that you have everything at your fingertips kind of as a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah. With, with the likes of basketball, there's still, and Kev mentioned this with the likes of the UNC freshmen, there is still a certain degree of probably poor physical literacy, even with yeah. some of them athletes. Now, but poor physical literacy over there is not the same as poor physical literacy over here. There, there is, it is at a different level um, over there. And I suppose... I, I don't know how I'd, I'd, I'd maybe make the exact comparison, but for example, the likes of some of the European players who I would have worked with, um, with at my time with the Rockets and then would have met a lot of guys coming through the draft. The European players, for the most part, some exceptions, were physically slower, were physically weaker. Most of them were pretty well conditioned which I think touches on Kevin's point earlier. I think that's definitely ingrained in the culture, even in Europe. But the, the other components of their physical development were more lacking. And it goes to even, I think, what Peter said earlier when he said, look, your skill set is strong. But his coach said, but you need to be stronger. You need to be able to yeah. jump higher. I think there's very much <laughs> that constant tension within the, in the, I'm talking specifically in the NBA between the European and international players and then the kind of American players. I actually I mean, have, like an were... example, I have an example of that. <laughs> I, when, when I was at UNC, there was a freshman who came in. He couldn't have been, he was probably six foot. Now, when I say he could probably jump from the free throw line and dunk the ball, that's what he could do. But when you got him to do a walking lunge through the hallway, he was falling down. And then what happened to him because he refused, I'm not saying because it's, it's correlated, but because he didn't buy into the S and C or physical preparation thing, he was injured for four years, Do you know? So there is that correlation where these athletes have developed amazing power, but then structurally they're just not sound and they break down. Is that because he would, he didn't do S and C when he was young or, he wouldn't buy in when he was there. He just spent four years on the bench in casts. So that's where I see physical preparation. Just because an athlete can jump really, really high doesn't necessarily mean the physical literacy is there. And I just, I, I, oh, sorry, sorry, Pete, go ahead. I oh, know, I just kind of like kind of what, what you were both saying. And I, again, touching upon what, what Kev said, or one of the points was we have to be able to meet these athletes where they are. I mean, like all our Irish athletes, I mean, they have a different story all of them and that's one of the huge challenges that uh, myself and kev have with kind of overseeing the program 
is that like, you know, like they are all individuals in the end of the day and we do have to meet them where they are, but at the same time, trying to get buy-in as well. And, you know, so it's, it's you know, there's a, there's a whole lot more to it and especially the, the whole logistics of it. But what you were saying, um, Aina, sorry. Uh, well, I was, I was just going to follow up in that it's just such, and it kind of goes to your point, Pete, this is such an amazing opportunity for European and international players because mm. the coaches in the NBA love European and international players because they come in with such great attitudes. They come in with such great fundamental skill sets. The only real chink a lot of the times in the armor for them is their physical capabilities, particularly on defense. Mm. Um, so it's such a wonderful opportunity if we can get buy-ins um, to really just kind of change that narrative a bit. Yeah. And, and obviously with the likes of what Kevin Pete there, and I'm sure Kevin uh, down in Cork are doing as well, the, the quality is in this country um, in terms of the coaches. It, it's been alluded to. And just a, another point with regards to even the pro side of things, the guys who have the longest professional careers are the guys who invest in their body and mm. look after their body. It seems silly to say but it but it's the truth and it goes to kevin's point about guys who have freakish athletic ability but without that structured routine development of their physical preparation their journey in sport is they're they're really putting it on risky uh, on risky footing mm. so once again I, i'll reiterate the point this is for everyone yeah. And I, I think, I suppose, and, and we're after going over the 40 minute mark, and I think we're going to hit for another 40, lads. I got to be honest, yeah. the, way, the way we're discussing this, like there's so much in it, but I, I think we definitely covered kind of the importance of SNC, I suppose, understanding SNC for the Irish public. But a few things I, I just want to second it from my time being in the States, like I, I often said, like an Irish coach that goes over to an Irish SNC coach, or even a coach in general that goes to the States, generally has massive success there very quick because they're highly educated, they're highly trained, they understand it, they understand the details of it and how to build robust athletes, to, to use your term, Kevin, that's, that's, that's the best way to put it. Um, and, and they're available to us here in Ireland, like everywhere. And, and we're not utilizing them as much as, as, I, as I said, they're, they're, they're so sought after in the States. Mm -hmm. Like I, I talked to a lot of coaches in the States and they said that the coaching over there is lacking. The strength and conditioning coaching, the, even the coaching, just understanding the game, like they just play the game over there and, and it's a rat race and it, it's, a, it's about recruiting more than it is about development of athletes. Mm. So we have a real platform here to develop our athletes and to, to, to you know, get them opportunities across the world and, you know, as, as if they're physically ready to play the game. And, and I think, I said, when we get to that level, we're going to see some really special things in Irish basketball. And I think we're definitely headed in the right direction based on this yeah. phone call. Um, so, I, you know, has anyone anything they'd like to share, share before I finish up here? Is there anything that we missed out on our... Just really enjoyed that, lads. Great conversation. Thanks very yeah, much. Yeah, thanks a lot. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, lads. And once again, um, Peter and Kev, fantastic content, fantastic work and preparation. And I would just encourage like all the coaches and parents in particular, um, really have a look at some of that content. I mean, you're really putting your child in the best position to develop themselves physically, whether or not they play elite level sport, just their general health will be improved by engaging with some of that, some of that content. So thanks, Anna. Cheers. Thank you. All right, man. Well, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks very much. I suppose anyone who tunes in and watches this conference talk, uh, just to uh, uh, reiterate here that Basketball Ireland's performance conference is associated with Pinergy, uh, the official partner of Basketball Ireland. And I suppose thanks everybody for, for getting involved.